Hi, my name is Tina, and this is Knitting Blooms. You can find show notes for everything I talk about on my blog at www.knittingblooms.com. And if I miss a link, please feel free to contact me on Ravelry as Blooming Knitter. Or you can email me at knittingblooms at gmail.com. Come and join the Ravelry group so you can be eligible for all the prize drawings. And be sure to introduce yourself so that I can get to know you also. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter as Blooming Knitter. And don't forget to click the like button on Facebook for Knitting Blooms. Today I'm going to share with you how I use groups within Ravelry. If you are in as many groups as I am, you will find it difficult to keep up with what's going on in each group. But today I'm going to share, you some, share with you some tips that I use to keep up with the groups. Now, as you can see on the left-hand side here, these are all the groups that I am in. And there are quite a few of them. And there are always activities going on with each group. So again, it is difficult to keep up with them. So I'm going to show you a bit of how I go about keeping up with all of my groups. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to search for specific groups. And let's say you want to search for the Knitting Blooms podcast group. You would just go to the search screen and search for Knitting Blooms and then click search. Once you find the group that you are looking for, you just click on the link to the group and then you are come to the group page. Now I am already in this group obviously because it is my group. So I so the button up here at the top says leave this group. But if I was not a member of this group, the button would say join this group and all you would simply do is click the join this group button. So let me show you that by joining a new group. So I will come up here to the search the search bar and I'm just going to type in podcast. And then I'm going to search. And I will look down the list and see, oh, I need to join this group, this podcast group. So I will click on the link. And you here again, you will see that it says join this group. So I will just click on join this group. And you have the option of selecting a tab or creating a new tab. And I will get to the instructions on how to create new tabs and to move things around. But for now, I'm going to select to put this group on one of my current tabs. And that current tab is podcasts. And this, so, this organizes my groups, which again, I'm going to get to shortly. So I'm going to select podcasts. And then these are all the groups that I'm on. And I can... I can take the group at this point and pick it up and move it to any spot I want to move the group to. So if I want to put it in a specific spot, I can drop it there and then click Save Changes. And now I am a member of that group and it is also on my tabs. So let me show you how to create a new tab when adding a new group. So here is a group that I would like to join and I go up to the join this group tab or button and I'm given the option again to select a tab that I currently have or to create a new tab and I'm going to create a new tab because I want to have a tab with just all of my knit along so I am going to create a new tab called knit along and then I'm going to click save changes. And it is that easy to create a new tab for your forms. So when I go over to my forms tab, then I have my new tab, which is right here, knit along. And when I click on that, that is the only group that is in this um, tab at this moment. But if I want to move other tabs or other groups to this tab, I, will, I can do that through my settings tab. Now before we get to looking at the tabs in the form, the form tabs, I want to also go through and show you the different other types of way that you can find groups. And they are all right here. Ravelry has a great way for you to easily find groups that are of interest to you. So you can search by location 
by by the city and state, country, what have you. If you know a group is if you're moving to a new area and you want to check out the groups in that area, you can do that. Um, you can search for local groups in within your your area. There are so many different ways you can find groups. You can search by country, here the nearby groups to me, and so forth. You can also search by specific categories. And when you click on that, you have a list of all sorts of different categories down the left hand side. So if you're not exactly sure what you are looking for, just take a look at all the different interests and whatnot on the left hand side. And I'm sure that you will find a group or two or 20 <laughs> that you are interested in participating in. You can also search by specific tags. Each group when they are created, they can select tags to be searched by. So by searching by a tag, you get all of these different little tags that have been attached to the groups. And you can select just a specific tag if you're looking for something specific like a competition or a contest or color work or any of these. And there are lots of different tags that you can check out. In addition, if you like to do knit-alongs, you can search by knit-along groups. So that is an easy way to just simply find all of the groups that do knit-alongs. And then you have the option to start your own group, which I am not going to get into in this video, but you, I just want to make you aware that that option is available. And then you can also search for events in your area. Now understand that when you do searches for events, these are only the events that have been entered in Ravelry by the group that is holding the event. So it may be a skewed um, list because if somebody has not entered the specific event you're looking for, you may not find it in this list. So those are all the different ways that you can search for groups and join groups that you are interested in participating in. Now let's get into how to go about reading them and keeping up with them. So we're going to go over to the forms tab and you will see the here are all of my groups. Now you will notice that there's little boxes with each individual group on this page and the list goes on and each of these little boxes shows the current threads that are happening within the group. Now these threads here that have the little arrow are stickied at the top of the group so they are always at the top of the group for um, for this particular group. That way you can find those threads very easily. You will see here at the top that I have multiple group or multiple tabs for each category. If I click on a different tab, I have different groups and each tab contains all of my different groups. This is one way to organize your groups or organize your forms so they're in groups. So let's go in and see how to organize the groups. Now this tab here, I have a miscellaneous tab and when I join a group, if I do not select a specific tab at the time of joining, my group goes to the miscellaneous tab because maybe I don't know what tab I want to put it on when I uh, join the group. So I will show you now how to reorganize and start new tabs for groups that you would like to organize. So we will go over here to the settings tab and you have lots of options here. At the top here on the left you will see that there are six boards that Ravelry kind of has as a main forms that you can join or unjoin as you choose. These are great boards if you aren't sure where to start with the forms 
and there is always great information that are that are uh, shared on these boards. Also, it, there are buttons on the bottom of your posts if you want to um, agree or disagree or love. I don't use any of these buttons, so I have all of them unchecked. If you decide you would like to have them available for use, then you can check them off and use them at your leisure. In addition, you have an option to select activity feed, which I will get to shortly, but I just want to make you aware that this is where you have to select. If you do not see the activity feed on your tabs, you need to select it here from the settings tab. In addition, there is a preview button or preview checkbox that you would need to check if you want to be able to view your posts um, as you hover over them. And I will show you some of that as well when we get to it. But first, let's look at how to organize our groups. So as I mentioned before, when I add a new group and I do not select a tab to put that group on, it automatically gets dropped into the miscellaneous uh, tab and then I would have to move it from this tab to where I want to put it. So for instance I have this board here for fans of Donna Dracunas and I really want to put it in the design and test. This is where I keep all of my groups that are about designing and designers and test knitting and whatnot. So I would like to move this group over to this tab and these are all the tabs here at the top. So all I'm going to do is put my mouse over the the box here and then click and drag it over to where I want to put it um, in this group. So and then I can just drop it right where I want to put it so when I go back to the design tab my form will be shown right at this at this spot. So if you have a group that you like to be at the top where you want to be able to see it all the time then you just have to move it up to the top um, so that's what I typically do I usually have my most favorite groups at the top of the tab so that I don't have to scroll down and look at them so even if you are moving a group within a tab all you have to do is select the group and then drag it up to wherever you want to drop it. It is that simple. Now I want to show you the difference between small, medium, and large boards. And then we will go back to the settings tab and I will show you how to change that. So here on the miscellaneous tab, I have selected to have my boards shown as small, which means that there are fewer uh, current posts on the board and if I click on to socks these are large boards so there are a lot more current posts on each board and then if I click on this group the design and test these are the medium boards and it shows a specific number of current posts now I prefer the medium boards because it's, it is a happy medium. The small boards I find have too few and sometimes if you have like this group here has a lot of stickies I only get to see the stickies if I have um, my board set to small and really the large boards I don't really need to see so many topics um, just at a glance so I really do prefer the medium boards that show um, a, a nice number of posts but also there's still uh, limited space. So before we go back to the settings tab I did want to show you you might have seen a second ago how when I when I hovered over a post the uh, the the first post of that thread comes up and I can read it and that's what I was saying about preview and we'll go back to the settings tab and I will show you again where to click that off if you want that preview to come up when you just hover over the post title in the group page. So we are now back on the settings page to be able to change the 
uh, group size. Uh, but again, I want to show you the preview button. So if you want to be able to hover over your post and see a preview of that first post in that topic, then uh, you need to have this button clicked. Now we're going to go down and we're going to change these board sizes. Um, like I mentioned, I had set the medium uh, or the miscellaneous board to small so I could show you that. So I'm going to switch it back to medium. And I had set the socks board to large. So I'm going to also switch that back to medium. And all of the other boards are set to medium. All the other tabs, I should say. Now, I do have more than these tabs here. If I scroll down, I have more tabs down here as well. Now, as far as I can see, there is no way to reorganize these tabs once they are um, in these orders. Once you've added a tab and it's set. There's no way to reorganize them as far as I can tell. But you can delete them obviously from here, but we're not going to do that. So if you didn't add a new tab when you joined a group, then you can do that from your settings tab. Now in my case, I have determined that I have too many boards or too many groups on my podcast tab. So I would like to split out my podcast, my audio podcast from my video podcast. So I'm going to create a new tab called audio podcasts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and click on the new add new tab button. And it kind of looks like nothing happened, but because I have already a lot of tabs, my new tab is all the way down here at the bottom. And it's the untitled tab. Now I can just simply click on the title and call it audio podcasts. And now I have my new board set up. Now I can also change this to medium boards because that's how I like it. And I can start clicking and dragging my audio podcast over from my other list. And once I have all of them there, then I will have my new boards listed. Now I want to go back to my podcast tab and change that to video. And I can simply do that by clicking on the title and just adding the word video. And then click OK. And when I go back to my, when I return to my boards, I now have a video podcast tab and an audio podcast tab. So now we are going to go and look at some of the other tabs. Now these are all of my personal tabs that I have set up and groups that I have joined. But in addition to these tabs that I have set up, there are some additional tabs over here in addition to the settings, which is where we just were to make some changes to our form pages. Uh, but there's also activity, browse, and radar. And I'm going to go through each of those tabs to show you what they contain and how I use each of them to stay up to date on my groups. The first tab we are going to look at is the activity tab. And this is one tab that I have really come to like a lot. Now if you click on the activity tab, you will start to see some posts here. And what is included in these posts are the every new post for the groups that you are subscribed to. So every single group, and it's in order by most recent, so you can scroll down and look at the, you can read the first, the, read the first post, and you can select whether or not you want to continue reading that particular post. In addition, you will also see that there are some um, posts for ones that you have watched which I will show you how to watch a tab um, in just a moment. But this is a great way to see all the new things that are happening, all the new posts that are coming up, as well as any posts that you have responded to or that you have marked as watched. 
So for instance, here is um, a post. I can read the post here. If I want to go and look at more detail of this particular post, or maybe I want to see if anyone else has responded to this post, I can just click on the link here. And it would take me directly to that group and that specific post. If I have read the post and I say, okay, that's interesting. I'm not, I, I don't need to go further than that. I've gotten the information that I need from this particular post. I can select to mark this topic as read. And as soon as I mark that topic as read, it goes to a small little box with a grayed out. Now, if I want to go back and look at that post, I can still click on this link and go directly to that post. Um, and I can also um, click show this post again. Maybe I accidentally marked it as red and I didn't mean to do that. Um, and it will come up again. So what I do is I go through and look at all these posts and see if there's anything that I'm interested in looking at. Now this is um, one of the groups that I'm in. This is a testing pool group. And this group posts all different things that need to be test knit. So I don't need to, I kind of like to see what is, is what, new, what is coming out, the new patterns that are com gonna be coming out and that need to be tested, but I don't need to continue to look at that post. So when I close that down, it, it just put it into this small little form and now I don't have to look at that anymore. Again, here's one that I have clicked on watch. So if I want to go and look at the additional posts that are on this thread, I can do that from here. But before I do that, I want to be able to show you another way to look at posts that have been responded to you. So anyway, as we look down the list, what I do is I will go through all of these, I will read them, and then I will mark them as, as red or uh, mark them as, what does it say exactly? Yeah, mark topic as red. So I will read each one of these um, beginning topics and then if I need to, I will mark them as red. If I need to go in and read further, I can do that. Here is another type of post that shows up here is the replied, which means that this might have been a this actually this was a thread that I started and this person has replied to my thread so then I can just go in and look at it from here this this activity tab is fabulous because if you are having to go to all of your different tabs and let me scroll back up and show you again if I had to go to every single one of my tabs and look for all the new posts that are happening and then go to this one and then go to the next one it would take me forever and maybe I have already looked at some of these posts but I haven't actually gone in to actually read them so maybe I have looked at them on the activity tab but I either wasn't interested or it didn't uh, pertain to me or something. So the activity tab is a great way to see up to the minute new posts in all of the groups that you are in. Now I mentioned a moment ago how you could look at posts that have been replied directly to you. And you can find that at the top of your uh, groups. And on any one of these tabs, it stays the same. It's always at the top there whenever you're on any tab. And you can click on that and have a direct link to a post that you need to respond to or that somebody has sent to you that you haven't read yet. So you can click directly on that link and it will take you to that post so that you can respond to that person directly. A moment ago I told you that there are ways to mark threads to watch. So I want to show you a couple different ways that you can mark a thread to watch. So I'm going to scroll down here to my Through the Loops uh, mystery shawl because I am participating in this uh, mystery knit along. And you can easily come over here to this uh, 
this column here, whether it has a star or it doesn't have a star or whatever, you can still select it. And I can click on that star and click watch this thread. So again, when I click on watch this thread, it will show up in my activity bar. Every single post that comes through on that thread will show up in my activity tab up here at the top. When I click on that activity tab, every post will show up there. Now another way to mark a thread to watch is to be into the thread and then come down here to the bottom and actually I'm already watching this one so let's select a different one to make it a little easier. So let's go to um, Let's go to this one because I don't want anybody to be spoiled if you're if you're using if you're doing this mystery along. So here's a thread that I haven't marked as watched, but if I want to mark it, I can come down here to tools and I can select watch thread. Now these are the same options that you have when you click on the little column over to the right on each thread. So I can click watch thread. In addition, if I'm reading this, as you read a thread, the uh, posts automatically get marked as read. But let's say I get distracted and I didn't get to read all the way down to post number 12 and I stopped at post number 8. I can still go back and mark, remark these posts as unread. So to do that, you go down here to this tab, which before it said tools. But now I can come here and I can select to change this read, um, read up to post to eight because that is the last post that I read. So I want to go ahead and click eight and mark it. And you will see automatically those posts get marked as unread. So now when I come back to this thread, I can read all of the posts. So I'm going to actually change this back to one so that I can uh, read all of these posts again. In addition, you can simply mark all posts as read for any particular thread. Again, you just click on this but this column here and like I said, it can be um, it can have a star or it doesn't have to have a star either way it, it still works. Then just click on mark all red. I'm sorry, mark all red here. And then now all those posts in that thread have been marked as red. At the same line, if there's a post that you want to ignore, for instance, if it's something that's an old thing that you don't need to even look at, or maybe it's a heated topic that you don't want to get in the mix of, you can mark that thread as ignore. And then you won't have to see that. And at the same time, you can also mark everything as red so that you don't have to see those uh, unread posts in the list. And again, these are the same options that you get if you click on the button at the lower right hand corner of the thread um, for the tools. These are the same options that you get. The next tab that we're going to look at is the browse tab. And when you select this tab, you have lots of options on this tab. Now the browse tab is every single post based on your criteria here at the top. So for right now I have watched threads and it will show me every post that has um, activity, new activity from my watched threads only. So if I want to have all the threads that would mean every thread that is in every group that I am in. So if there's new activity, it'll automatically show here. And it will show me how many unread messages that I have in those, um, in those threads. Now, these are threads that I have gone in and looked at, meaning if I have gone in and read one of the posts, it will tell me how many additional posts have been made to that thread since I last read that thread. So I can easily see where I need to catch up and what I need to, um, what I need to read. Or if I'm just looking for some new activity, I can just kind of go down and read each individual post. 
Now, if I only wanted to see specific tabs, like let's say I only wanted to see what's going on on the podcasts tab. So I can click on podcasts and then I only see the posts that have taken place on the podcasts tab or in that in the groups that are in that tab. And again, I can see which ones I which um uh, threads I have read, I have looked at, and all the other ones that don't have any messages that say unread, that means that I have either read all of the posts or I haven't read any posts in that particular thread. I can also select further by selecting a specific uh, podcast. So if I select a podcast, then I can see only the activity that have happened on that particular podcast. And again, it's each individual thread from this group. So if I want to go back and show different criteria of threads to show, then I would need to come back to this tab and select none for each of these so that it will select um, all of my groups on all of my tabs. I can select unread threads so any thread that I have never read anything on it will show me those threads and I can select to choose a topic from there and it's taking quite a while to load because there's quite a bit of information. I can select threads that I have started, threads that I'm already reading, threads that I've posted in, watched threads, and ignored threads. So there are lots of options that you can select in this um, tab as well. I haven't used the browse tab as often as I have used the activity tab because I just find that the activity tab is a little bit easier to read through and if I need to look at it more information I can always go directly to the uh, particular tabs or groups that I'm in and look at the information there or I can come to the browse tab if I'm just wanting to see what new posts have been going on since the last time I checked this tab. The last tab that we're going to look at today is the radar tab and the radar tab is just plain fun. I don't use it that often but if I ever have some spare moments, I do come in here and just kind of watch a little bit, see if there's any interesting activity. The radar tab is a like a ticker of posts, all posts that are currently happening on Ravelry at this very moment. And you can just sit here and watch uh, as the, the posts go by. If you see an interesting topic that you want to go and check out, you can easily just cl click on the post number and go directly to that post. Or you can click on the, the title. This is the group that the post is in so that you can just go directly to that group. Or you can click on this um, arrow over here and go directly to that thread. So there are several ways that you can use that radar tab. So I hope you enjoyed all of my tips on how to use the groups and forums in Ravelry. If you have any questions you can get in contact with me at knittingblooms at gmail.com Obviously, you can join the Ravelry group Knitting Blooms and ask questions there, as well as you can PM me on Ravelry as Blooming Knitter. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!